Welcome back. I'm Annette Holman, and we've reached the end of Daniel. Through circumstances, through visions, God has consistently demonstrated to Daniel that he is in control and he is always with them, even in captivity. <laughs> what a rich gift this book has been to me. Coming to today's chapter, we move from prophecy about the future, which is our ancient history now, into end time revelation or eschatology. With this change in focus, we'll see what we've seen all along in Daniel. God remains in control. He is in charge of directing history to the destination that he wants it to go to, even if our circumstances suggest otherwise and his plan promises deliverance. We'll also rejoice that for those whose names are in the book, God's story ends with them receiving an allotted inheritance. As we move through this chapter, we'll see that God's control and his promise to deliver don't function separately. Rather, they are united like a thread that runs through this chapter. Remember a question asked this week in the Life Change Study Guide. What would you suggest are God's primary purposes for the message of Daniel in the lives of his people today? For me, a more familiar way to ask that question is, what is God trying to do in the church through the book of Daniel? How does he want to form and change us? We'll keep that an open question. Chapter 12 ends Daniel's final vision, which began in chapter 10. In this vision, Daniel has seen the ongoing instability of earthly kings and kingdoms. He's seen that evil itself is unstable and doesn't last as an ongoing kingdom. In fact, evil keeps imploding and cannibalizing kingdoms and starting over again. Aren't remnants of this vision carrying on today? Jerusalem, Gaza, Ukraine and Russia, Yemen, Haiti. These horrific conflicts are devastating to live through if it involves your homeland. A Filipino theologian recently remarked to a group of seminary students in Ukraine Tragic circumstances call for tragic theology. I've also heard something like this referred to as the gospel of suffering. He urged Christians to learn to lament in order to fulfill their trusting in and obeying God. Today's passage doesn't take us into lament, so we won't explore that. But whether in the Middle East or in the U.S., I mention this because we still encounter brokenness that requires honest grieving before the Lord. Moments or even seasons can obscure from our view God's control and our hope in His deliverance. We need to choose to plant these truths and lessons Daniel is offering deep into our hearts and souls for easy access and better comfort um, by the Spirit in our hard times. The passage opens with both hope and need. We will see God's victory over evil and its influence as we move from vision into eschatology or the end times. How do we know that chapter 12 is speaking of the end times? The repeated phrases, at that time, the time of the end. With this as our marker, we also know the beginning of the end time revelation didn't start in chapter 12, but backs into chapter 11 where it speaks of a coming enemy, likely the Antichrist, that will come to his end and no one will help him. That's verse 45 in chapter 11. So let's start by reading the first four verses in chapter 12. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never been seen since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. 
and those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. In Daniel 12, verse 7, this tone is seen in answer to the question of how long? And yes, while we are assured that God is involved and in control, we may resonate with Daniel, who says in verse 8, I heard, but I did not understand. Will there be a rapture or not? Will believers be around in end time tribulation or not? This passage doesn't explicitly answer those questions and many still debate them. Let's instead focus on what scripture tells us to prepare for, hard times. We need this counsel regardless of our eschatological timelines. We've witnessed in Daniel that we shape our lives, that as we shape our lives to God's plan, we will inevitably face adversity. We will experience the effects of evil that pushes back against God's plan, yet we hold so much more revelation than the original hearers of the book of Daniel, and we can cling to Christ's resurrection power. I'm going to read from Colossians 2, 15, um, where we are reminded that he, that is Christ, disarm the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them by the cross. And we know that we stand with the believers in Hebrews as they were addressed in Hebrews 10, 32 through 34. The writer reminds his readers, but recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with suffering, sometimes by publicly being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property. Since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one, as Stacy advised us when teaching Daniel, chapter 8, we need to keep our eyes on the Lamb, on Christ, not primarily on our circumstances. When we are focused on Christ as a community of people, we can remind each other that we already have a better possession than anything we can think that we have here on earth and in its abiding, eternal one. It is Christ himself, the one who controls history and delivers his people as he faithfully walks through us, through all of our life. We can, really, for our own goods, dear ones. We must join with the Spirit's work to etch these promises of hope, of victory, of an end to distress onto our minds and souls. These promises are real and they are meant to sustain us. While we will never welcome trials, we can be unsurprised by them, knowing that endurance and hope in Christ are ours. To that end, we have a great hope waiting for us in verse 2. We see our earthly death referred to as sleep, helping the reader make room for the concept of resurrection and eternal life, because this passage is the clearest Old Testament reference to a resurrection after death. The resurrection that we know as reality in Christ was a new revelation to Daniel and its first hearers. And we need to connect the magnitude of this resurrection with verse 1, where it is portrayed as a corporate resurrection of a people, the church, everyone whose name is found in the book. It is healthy for us to contemplate our place. In the whole of God's resurrected church, as scripture speaks of resurrection, more as a whole body 
than limiting resurrection to our individual delight. Verse 2 also shows us that, that there is a future beyond death for all. Hmm. For some it will be to everlasting life, and to others it will be to shame and everlasting contempt. A very daunting truth. Which moves us to verse 3, where we see an astounding image of the bright, visible difference the lives of the wise make. Verse 3 says, And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Who are these wise? I want to be one. These wise who lead many to righteousness? First, they are the ones whose lives are found written in the book, the ones who will awake from the dust to everlasting life. The wise are the ones who have experienced transformed lives by righteousness and are leading others to their God of righteousness. The wise shall stunningly share in the glory of God. Second, we will look back to last week's passage in chapter 11, verses 33 and 35 for help. So Daniel 11.33 begins, And the wise among the people shall make many understand, though for some days they shall stumble by sword and flame, by captivity and plunder. And then verse 35, Some of the wise shall stumble, so that they may be refined, purified, and made white, until the time of the day, <laughs> until the time of the end, for it still awaits the appointed time. So what did we find in these chapter 11 verses? I think they told us three things about the wise. Number one, the wise are among us on earth, instructing many. And then Daniel 12, 3 goes further when it says the wise lead many to righteousness. We saw this as Daniel and his friends lived their lives on two occasions, the pagan kings they served declared God's glory, recorded in Daniel chapter 4 and chapter 6. And then those two verses tell us that the wise are not perfect, they stumble. Why? Because we are in the purification process, we are being refined. We are strengthened, we are purified as we live in the redemptive care of our God. And then three, the wise experience pain and suffering. And in the midst of all these things, what do the lives of the wise resemble? Daniel 12, 3 says their lives shine like the brightness of the heavens and the stars forever. We get to share in the Lord's glory in this life and beyond. As described in verse three, our lives will be beautiful to behold as we obey the Lord, walk in his ways, and live in a way that serves and leads others to righteousness, or as we often say now, lead people to Christ. So, my dear co-laborers, we can dare to believe that our lives can and do radiate the light of the gospel, the glory of the Lord, being like the brightness of the heavens, like the stars forever and ever as we give our obedience, our love to Christ, and then to others, including neighbors and enemies. Amen. Verse 4 brings us to the end of the vision as Daniel is instructed to close up and seal the scroll until the end of time. This is repeated in verse 9. It is as though Daniel is being encouraged that the future just relayed is true and reliable, which means he can rest in the work of the Lord for the future of Israel and beyond. And then that brings us to the closing uh, verses, verses 5 through 13. This ends with a brief Q&A session in a scene with heavenly messengers that remind us of this vision's opening scene of Daniel 10.4. The questions asked in these verses go hand in hand with suffering. How long and what will the outcome be? Neither question is given a clear answer. 
The time frames provided for a time, times, and half a time, and then 1,290 and 1,335 days still don't seem quantifiable. I went to several sources looking for something to help us kind of make sense of this, and I ended up siding with author and commentator Chris Wright who said all attempts to work out an exact meaning of the numbers seem to end in confusion. And we experienced some of that. Deuteronomy 29, 29 tells us some of the same thing. It says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God and Verses 5 to 13, really, the whole chapter has a lot of secret things in it. But the verse goes on. The things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. So let's hold tight to what has been clearly revealed. Because that belongs to us. For our strength, our peace, our perseverance, our worship. These revelations will help us answer the earlier question of what God is trying to form and change in us, his church, through the book of Daniel. So verse 12, the blessed ones will be the ones who endure in faithful obedience to the end. Matthew 24 that we read from earlier informed us that Christ will come again and he will gather his elect the blessed. God is in control of history and its outcome. And finally, in verses 9 and 13, Daniel is told to go his way, not in a dismissive way, but more as an invitation. Daniel can stop feeling overwhelmed by this vision. He can return to his routines, his obedient God honoring life, because God's got it and God's got us. So Daniel could rest in the Lord's finished work for him, for the people Daniel loved, because God is saving and will rescue us. For those whose story rests in Christ, the day is coming when we will receive our inheritance as we stand in our privileged place before the Lord. Chapter 12 has shown us God is in control and he delivers on his promises for our deliverance. So like Daniel, we can live our stormy and peace-filled moments with that confidence. Let's pray. Oh, eternal Lord, we are so grateful that you are in control and that there is a plan history is leading somewhere to the new heavens and the new earth. The Spirit, we pray that you will form us, that you will change us, and you will unite us as a church to live in faith, knowing that substance of the promises that you have given to us through the book of Daniel. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hi, ladies. Can you believe we are nearing the end of our study in Daniel? I hope you will join us again in the fall because we have a wonderful study ahead. Want a clue? Do you know which book of the Bible references this verse from Isaiah 28, 16? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. Our study next year will be a book from the New Testament. 
Do you know which book of the Bible quotes this passage from Psalm 16, 8 through 10? I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. Joel 2, 28 to 29 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Have you figured it out yet? Mm -hmm. I hope you will join us in the fall as we see this prophecy come to fulfillment. Mm -hmm.